Hello, Barbara Lewis with Singing After 40. I thought I'd start today's video outside since it's so beautiful. A bit chilly, I'm cold, but it's beautiful at this time of year in Canada. Now I'm going back inside the studio where it's warmer and uh, we can get started. <laughs> See you soon. Hello again. So I'm inside now, but it's I'm still pretty chilly, so I'm going to keep my jacket on for a little while. Today we're going to talk about high notes for older people like myself. Now I learned to sing high notes many, many years ago, so this is not a new thing for me. But when you get older, there's different kinds of things to think about uh, regarding high notes. There might be a little less stretch in the throat, there might be a little more dryness. So you need to approach anything that you do in singing with quite a lot of quiet determination. I remember as a, as a young singer that uh, I had to deal with a lot of frustration. High notes for me were something that came after a lot of hard work. Uh, probably much more hard work than was necessary because I was frustrated by it. If you find that uh, you are getting a little kind of uh, irritated, use the breathing exercise that I give all the time, the one where you take a full breath in and you exhale on a long held S. Follow the breath with your mind. So you're getting rid of, you're letting go of those uh, angry or frustrated or fed up feelings. Just let it all go. I just went outside and asked the geese to leave. There were so many of them and they're very, very noisy. Uh, I thought it would penetrate my video here. But I left my camera out there so uh, we can see the beautiful lake. I hope it's not too distracting. There are different approaches to high notes. If one thing doesn't work for you, then you try something else. So here's a, a very famous one. You probably have done it. Uh, if so, just do it again. It's very well known. It's called bubble lips. So for those of you who are beginning, I'm going to do one to five to one. It's a, it's a short compass. You don't have to sing wide range. We're going to get up there and come back down. So here we go. I'll show you first. Now, if you can't get your lips to bubble like that, stick your fingers here. You kind of lift your muscles into a better position. Sometimes that takes a little bit of work. I've noticed that some, some of my students can't do it easily and you know, they have to go home and work on it. And sometimes you just fluke into doing it. So you're very gently blowing air. You don't really feel that you're blowing. You just say, your, your brain says, I want to make this sound. It's like kids do, or it's like horses do. It's just having fun. So if you can find it, do this with me. Are you doing it with me? Come. Now you hear it's a light sound. Not a big deal. It's kind of just having fun. One more. You may have found that you couldn't go quite that high as a beginner, or you may find that your voice just will sail much higher. We never know. It's so, voices are so uh, idiosyncratic. They're very personal. And some people can do one exercise and can't do another, so stay calm. That's your first exercise. I'm going to take you through it now. Uh, without doing it. I'll just start you off. Thank you. 
The second exercise is a favorite of Dr. Tietze, well-known uh, researcher and uh, person who studied voices a lot over many, many years. And this was uh, on the top of his list of exercises that are good for keeping the vocal uh, muscles in good shape. So it's on an E. E, E, You're just sliding. It's a very simple slide. We're going to go up in fifths to make it a very easy movement up. And you don't need to even know what a fifth is. But that's what it sounds like. So it's on an E vowel. Uh, if it's too high for you, stop. If it's too low, come in a little bit later. Never strain. So, you know, if you need to, turn me off and just see if you can find this feeling of easy movement, kind of a slide. E and then we're just going to go up in fifths. You really only need to do two or three of these just to get the feeling of moving. Sing with me. See, my jaw is opening. But only as much as the, the, the notes need. So it's not like you're forcing your jaw open. It's like a stretch. It's a gentle stretch. So that's exercise number two. I'm not going to take you through a whole bunch of things where you do it with me on your own because I think you need to just kind of find that fool around with it. Yee, yee. Just that feeling of the inner stretch. All of this needs to be done with a feeling of joyfulness that that you're finding the voice that rings and sings for you without a lot of pain, with no pain. No pain certainly in your throat, but no emotional pain either. It's it's kind of an uplifting feeling of, of lifting your voice out rather than forcing it. Of course, it takes a muscular coordination to do this, and I'm teaching you that without you really knowing it. But I want you to feel the joy of making this happen. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, if you like these kinds of videos, please leave me a comment down below. I'm going to put a link to Dr. Tietze's um, favorite singing exercises, a link to, to where he talks about them down below. And also, please join my weekly newsletter. Uh, I send it out every week, and it's about these very things with a little more information that, than you'll get here. So I wish you great singing, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>